This is Brian Schwartz at the University of California, San Francisco. I'm going to be talking to you today about infection in patients with hematological malignancy. This is going to be a brief module and help hopefully give you a quick overview of the types of infections and the risks of infections in these patient population. Learning objectives are for you to recognize the immunological defects that increase infection risk in patients with hematological malignancy for you to understand which infections are common in patients with hematological malignancy, and know several of the strategies used to prevent infection in patients with hematological malignancy. So the most common infections we see in this patient population are similar to that that we see in patients with healthcare-associated infections. For example, staphylococcal species like Staphylococcus aureus. We also tend to see streptococcal viridens group strep infections, which we'll talk about more, pseudomonas, other gram-negative rods. In the fungi category, we tend to see candida as well as aspergillus, but you can also see with these other molds like mucor, rhizopus, and fusarium. Why are patients with hematological malignancy at increased risk for infection? Well, the malignancy itself actually can predispose them to infection. Some malignancies, like multiple myeloma, may make you have low immunoglobulin levels, which can predispose you to infection. Some of them can cause so much disease that they'll actually infiltrate the bone marrow and then reduce the number of good white cells you have, like your neutrophil count may be very low because you have so much cancer in your bone marrow, and that can put you at risk for infection. But most of the time, what we think about is the chemotherapy being an important factor in making the patients immunocompromised. Most importantly are the neutropenia, so the neutrophils being an important immune cell, and mucositis, or having breakdown in the normal mucosal barriers in the mouth and in the gut, allowing entry of bacteria in there. So you can see in this picture here of a patient with really severe mucositis, and you can imagine it'd be easier for bacteria to enter through the mouth. In patients who have undergone a stem cell transplant, they also get chemotherapy, can be neutropenic and have mucositis, but following the stem cell transplant, there is a disease called graft-versus-host disease, and that's actually when the donor's cells can attack the recipient's body. And to prevent that from being severe, patients get put on further immunosuppressive therapy that deplete T cells or inhibit T cell function, and those can also predispose them to infection. And much like mucositis can open up normal intact barriers, so can having the presence of central venous catheters and allow bacteria uh, and sometimes species like candida in through the skin and into the blood. And this is a patient here who has a right internal jugular catheter. So what are the pathogens that we think about in patients with cancer and neutropenia? As I said, mucositis, opening up a portal of entry in the mouth and the gut, can predispose mouth organisms, such as viridens group streptococci. So that's actually a common cause of bacteremia or blood in the bacteria in patients who have mucositis. But the normal flora or the normal bacteria that live in the mouth change in the setting of chemotherapy and other to getting other types of antibiotics and gram-negative rods like enteric gram-negative rods like E. coli or pseudomonas may become important pathogens um, and be in the mouth. Candida, a normal fungi that lives in our gut, in the setting of getting a lot of antibiotics becomes overgrown in the gut and in the mouth and infection with this organism becomes more likely. We talked about entry from the skin when patients have central lines in place, like this patient. We can see Staphylococcus aureus, Staphylococcus epidermidis as well, gram red of rods, and candida. And then also for the respiratory tract, we can see infections. This is a patient actually who has an aspergillus infection, a mold infection. And you can see on the CT scan here, let me point this out, this area of uh, white circle, um, and then is in a nodule, and in the center you see some black. That's actually cavitation, so area where the there's a death of lung tissue and necrosis. So that's a cavitary lung nodule due to aspergillus, a mold type of fungi. You can also get respiratory tract infections with some of the common bacteria that cause bacterial that cause hospital acquired pneumonia, like Staph aureus, MRSA, and Pseudomonas. So what are some strategies to prevent infection in patients with neutropenia who are undergoing treatment for cancer? 
Well, you can try to speed their neutrophil recovery, get those neutrophils back to protect them from infection. And one way that this is done is they get granulocyte colony stimulating factor. And if you remember from your learning about um, the development of, uh, of hematopoiesis, you can see that GCSF is granulocyte colony stimulating factor is actually a normal thing that's made in humans that stimulates the production of neutrophils. So we're uh, replicating that and using it in humans to speed the recovery. Chemoprophylaxis or giving antibiotics to prevent infection like giving antibacterials or antifungals has also been shown to be very efficacious in patients with poor immune systems. This is the end of this module.